Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back to another Late Start Wednesday. Uh, Sorry for the delay. I did not realize that there was a power surge and we had some technical stuff that uh, I had to go fix. But I'm here with my beautiful wife. Oh, you don't want me to say what I said Sunday? No. Um, She's gorgeous. I'm here again on the couch. Uh, We're here to discuss... Episode three of the committed series that I have been preaching for the last several weeks. And uh, while we get going, let us know where you're watching from, of course, in the comments. Uh, Do me a favor tonight and hit share. If you're on YouTube, share it to somewhere, text it to five people, who knows what could happen. Uh, But let's start doing a little bit more to spread the gospel in Jesus' name. Um, It's a little wet out there. I'm, I'm definitely tired of the rain, but... It's good. Uh, it's better than a drought. Do you want to do the announcements, or you want me to do it? No, that's fine. You look like you're <laughs> just waiting for you to get that hot all that. in the. Uh... <laughs> um, so the women's small group was really good. That was last night. Um, I did not go. <laughs> 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 I don't want to get called out. Um, so the next thing coming up is <clears throat> women's fellowship, which is tomorrow night, um, six thirty to seven thirty, and I believe uh, Cynthia is going to be doing something special um, for that. I'm not going to ruin it. Sherry told me what it was. Oh, I don't know. Um, And then family, oh, the potluck is this Sunday. Yes, I'm excited because food. Yes, so (laughs) basically bring whatever you want that's edible. (laughs) <laughs> and you can put and it in legal. the kitchen before and legal. <laughs> I don't. Why do we have to say that? Know, is there a legal food? <laughs> um, and then that night is the ultimate frisbee for the youth. And the new visitors class is the following Sunday. And the bring aboard family night will be the twenty seventh, from six to eight p.m. The twenty seventh, I think, is a Friday. Right. I think so. I don't know. Yep. I was changing the AC because I was already hot. Yep. Um, do you want me to do October or no? No. No, we'll, we'll get October when we get to October. Let's, um, Tanya said it for me. Well, he, she, she said uh, hot smoking wife. Kelsey doesn't smoke, so I would say smoking hot wife. Right, can but, we stop uh, talking about me? Really <laughs> We're here to talk about Jesus. Uh, yeah, let's let's jump right in because I'm ready to get, get to it, get back home and... Uh, Take a nice shower. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this is um, week three, episode three of the f- uh, the family room <laughs> of the committed series. Uh, going in from the life of Jehoshaphat, we started in Second Chronicles seventeen. The end goal is uh, chapter twenty. But if if you've been paying attention, if you've been here watching, if you haven't, go on our YouTube, watch the series. It's a great way to spend uh, like six hours. <laughs> if you're but, driving uh, to Georgia, yeah. Depends. If you're driving to Georgia, you want to hear <laughs> just, just straight truth from from the uh, from the Lord. Colorado, throw Wyoming. it on. They, they've gone. I, I've gotten shorter each time, and this coming Sunday chapter, I have each one has gotten a little bit shorter. Yeah, until you pray. Hey, that prayer, <laughs> that was the Holy Ghost right there. That was that was a fire prayer. That, that was, was awesome. Fine. I felt charged myself, and I, that was completely God. But, uh, yeah, so this Sunday will be chapter 19. It is the shortest chapter. It's only 11 verses, so we'll but see yet. what happens there. Huh? But yet, you will but find yet. a way. But yet, you know, we've got all eternity in heaven to just enjoy the Lord, so why not get as much as, as we can down here? But this, the, what we're here to discuss tonight is... Episode three, uh, rejection, and I'm sure when I brought that up, and I know when I mentioned it to you and, and to Dad, you guys were like, "Ooh, rejection!" And y'all thought that yeah, I was speaking more Yeah, and then you said it last on... Wednesday. You're like, "Rejection." Kelsey knows all about that. Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean like that. You're like, oh, I mean, I don't no. know. <laughs> but I was getting more, and and I I did spend I think a couple minutes talking about like just the rejection that um, the way people react from rejection that they get from. From I say men, but I mean like, you know, man and woman, like just human rejection. But the main focus of this was the fact of 
uh, the rejection of the word of the Lord. So if you don't know this story, just a quick recap. Uh, in Second Chronicles 17, Jehoshaphat, the fourth king of Judah after the split, he's a descendant of David. Um, he, he follows the ways of David. He, he, he took the good things from his father Asa, um, who kind of struggled at the end of his walk, and Jehoshaphat does as well. But he did a little bit better job, and uh, the Lord establishes his kingdom. He's, he's made to be uh, wealthy. He sends teachers and priests out to, treat, to teach the, the law, to teach the Bible. Um, and obviously, that's only part of the Bible. Yes, we don't need somebody fact-checking me and saying, oh, well, the Bible didn't exist. Obviously, it was just part of the Bible that he was sending them out to teach. He sent them out to teach, and the fear of the Lord immediately falls on all the surrounding nations. And then immediately in chapter, that was renewal, that was week one. And week two was the relapse where he gets an unholy alliance with Ahab who's completely uh, apathetic, full of apostasy. The, he's the, the king of the north. They've rejected God. They do nothing godly. And Ahab uh, essentially kind of tricks him to go to war with uh, Ramoth Gilead, which was actually a land that belonged to Judah. But Ahab wanted it because he liked to covet things. And he hires 400 false prophets, and then comes Micaiah, which is where we kind of focused this week, with the true word of the Lord. And they both end up rejecting it. They reject the instructions that are given to them that says, if you go do this, you're going to die. And they still go to the war. Ahab dies. And where we'll pick up in 19 this week is when Jehoshaphat comes home. But the whole thing was just about rejecting the word of the Lord. And at the end, we did, I, I, I tied it into uh, 2 Timothy, uh, a little bit on the end of chapter 3, but mainly the first couple verses of chapter 4 that talks about in the end times where there is um, just a complete rejection of God's word and all that's getting, pre well, not all that's getting preached, but a lot of things that are getting preached is things that people want to hear for their itching ears. Uh, and if you have a favorite quote, as always, put it in the comments. We'd love to see what you guys say and jump off of things. Um, what do you think? Something that popped out to you? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Well, we started, <coughs> I started, <laughs> my main so focus was in uh, verse 12. And it was kind of hard because it talks about all of the prophets without exception are predicting success. They're all predicting the same thing. And, and something I said at the beginning was just that prophets don't predict. Prophets foretell the future. That's how you can tell a false prophet is when obviously what they're saying uh, cannot stand up to the word of God. You can, you can test it against the scriptures and it's just not, it's not biblically sound. And also the fact that whenever a prophet told something about the future, if they were a prophet of God, it would come true because it was God giving them the vision of the future, God telling them to speak it. And obviously it was and would and will come to pass. But with a false prophet, they just fill your head with lies and, you know, they'll tell you, you know, you can see it today with stuff like, oh, follow this 18-step thing and, and pray these eight different prayers a day in your mirror for six months and God will make you a millionaire type of thing. And obviously that's just a big hocus pocus lie and that's just not how God works. But um, that was just the thing of just prophets don't predict. Have you, have you, I'm not trying to throw you under the spot, but oh, have you ever seen like anything? You <laughs> have you seen anything yet? Because I don't mean this in the wrong way, but you do watch more reels than I do because you're always the one that's like, have you heard of this? Have you seen this? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And you're sending me like 9,000 reels in my watch, Facebook messengers. But it's okay. But I do watch. Um, you don't watch. I do. I just watch them all in one big dump instead of all uh, throughout the time. But have you come across anything that's like, just you you hear it and you're like this is not like what is this no no <laughs> i see it all the time i see I it all the time it's really different frustrating reels. Huh? we watch completely different reels yeah. than each other uh, yeah I'm that's more the thing like with the algorithm and you're watching like the really you like the funny stuff and i'm just like yeah. get me into conspiracy theories and crazy people that think they know what they're talking about with the bible but no i see it all the time and that's 
social media is, it, it is a beautiful thing to be able to connect with people like this, like we're live right now and we can connect with these people watching. <clears throat> but there's also the dark side of it where it's the double-edged sword. We all have the platform, and I've said it before. We all have the platform. You can post on Facebook whenever you want, or X, or Instagram. You know, you can post a Bible verse, share a sermon, share the family room, whatever. You can share something about Jesus. And then you have the other dark side of that where everyone can just share whatever opinion they want and try to pass it off as fact. And now we have the unfortunate side where there's just so much false information that comes out onto these things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I come across it all the time. And that's why you have to... That's what's important about staying in the Bible and staying in the Word and knowing the truth and knowing the Word because if you just go on the internet and, you know, your whole Christian faith is nothing but milk, I mean, you go on there and you're not going <laughs> to, you're not going to know when someone's giving you lactate and trying to pass it off as the real thing and it's like, it's not even actual biblical knowledge or biblically based, it's just, just a bunch of stuff with a little bit of, you know, truth cinnamon sprinkled on the top. That way Wait, you think what did you're you just say? Truth cinnamon. <laughs> That's what they do. They Sorry, give you. I was thinking about this. <laughs> they give you just a little cinnamon. bit of truth. Yeah. And then it's the, all the rest of it is lies, and it leads all these people down this these dark tunnels and these dark paths, and then it leads these people to thinking that they've actually got like the true Bible and the true gospel and all this, and and you know then they start looking into all these other books that aren't even in the Bible and it's not canon, and then they get into just all this stuff, and ultimately what it does is it leads people just to completely reject Jesus, and that's where we are today. Do you think today. they know that they're doing it? No, they don't. Um, in the Bible, <coughs> excuse me, it talks about how the God of this world, little g God, which is Satan, mm -hmm. uh, this world is essentially his kingdom until Jesus comes back and imprisons him in hell, and there's the new heaven and the new earth type of thing. Um, but it talks, the Bible talks about how he blinds the minds of the unbelievers. That's why, that's what makes it so difficult to preach to people and to try to reach the lost is because they don't realize they're lost. They're just completely blinded. Their ears are shut off. That's why you see, like, you've seen it, the street preacher things that I watch, and they're just, like, covering their ears and screaming. The demons are literally trying to stop them from listening to it. And uh, that's just the thing is some of them, yes. That is, so have you heard of the, um, the, the unforgivable sin when you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, the one sin that can't be forgiven? No. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so it, the Bible talks about how uh, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's like the unforgivable sin. Mm -hmm. And the truth of that is... What's that, what that is pertaining to is these people that have hardened their heart so much against God, like Pharaoh in Exodus, where his heart gets hardened. He sees the signs of God. He knows he's being judged. He sees everything, but he sets his heart and hardens his heart against it to reject God. That's why it's the unforgivable sin. They eventually, they reject the pull of the Holy Spirit. They reject conviction so much. They reject God so much that their heart gets so hardened that it's, it's essentially... Uh, impossible for them to come to God to repent and to be saved because they're just they've rejected it so much that they're just completely shut off to it. That's why it's the the unforgivable sin. So with these people, if I mean, just say it's not like you're saying with the demons and everything. Let's just say it's just they're plain rejecting it. Um, do you think that's more fear based? Do you think it's a fear based of rejection? Do you think if they acknowledge that if they acknowledge that there is a heaven and a hell, do you think it's not necessarily them not wanting to do the right thing? Maybe they're rejecting it out of fear because once they acknowledge that there's a heaven and hell, they realize and have to come to terms that they may be going to hell right now if they died tonight. So do you think if it's a it, it maybe it boils down to not everybody, but maybe some are just it's a complete fear reaction to reject because once you realize and no longer reject, then you have to come to terms with 
what you need to do. So yes. maybe if it's ignorance <coughs> is right. bliss. Um, honestly, you can't even you can't even say ignorance is. And I don't well, I didn't mean, mean it like no, that. I know, but, but I'm, I'm saying, saying I'm just saying. Um, Really There's think about even, it, and if they just, you know, like, la, 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 I can't hear you type of thing, you it's know, control. it's not going to become a reality. It, it, it's fear, and it's control. The, 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 the reality is God is within all of we all Everyone, that's like the people, their argument wants to be like, well, what about someone in uh, some remote village that has no access to internet or anything like that, and we'll, we don't even know about them. The Bible says that, like, literally all, you can see God in creation. We're designed within us, uh, he's put it within our DNA to know that he's there and to worship him, like, it's, it's within us. So, the thing is, like, everyone knows, essentially, there's something within, oops, there's something within you that knows there is a God, there knows that he is there. But the thing is now, it's, it's a weird thing. So you have, we live in a time now that you can literally prove the Bible without the Bible. There's so much historical evidence. There's so much just evidence, period. Uh, science eventually, no matter how much they want to reject God, science always catches up and proves the Bible. Um, even if they don't want to, it still does. And it's just... You can literally look all throughout history. I mean, Jesus revealed himself to over 500 witnesses. There's just so much evidence that proves the existence of Jesus and we're prove, uh, that proves uh, the resurrection of Jesus as well. And basically what it boils down to now is it's not a lack of evidence that stops people from believing and coming to God. It's a pride issue, which is obviously the first sin um, that was committed was Satan um, being prideful, wanting to be like God, so he gets cast out of heaven. That's what I would refer to as the original sin, if you will, like the very first sin. And, um, but, uh, so yeah, the reality is just like, we all, we all know, and there's evidence, and people want to say there is no evidence, but there, there literally is. There's so much stuff that proves the Bible. You don't even need the Bible to prove the Bible. There's so much stuff that proves it. And the reason that people reject it is because they want to be in control of their own lives, which probably, I would say, yes, does kind of boil down to a fear issue. I don't think issue. that's every single one, though, because you have to think about it, too. You've made the point before that a lot of people look at God as they, you know, how they had their father, like a role model with their father. So, and I'm just kind of looking at this at a completely different angle, but if... You know, some people also might reject it on the fact of um, completely walking hand in hand tied up with how they handle human rejection. So if they can't fathom someone actually loves them, you know, it's they're not going to want to hear anything about it because they're going to associate that rejection with every type of human <coughs> interaction they've had um, in their past. So... Do you get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. if you're sitting here and you're, you've had faced so much rejection from every human you've, and it, not every human is going to do that, but if you've been hurt enough, you're going to look at people in a whole different lens. So if you're thinking, you know, this is the person that created, or this is the, you know, this is God who created everybody and everybody's treating me like this, well, isn't that kind of how he is too then? You know, he, there's no way that he's going to love me like that. So the only reason why I'm bringing all this up is because I was thinking the other day with rejection, um, you know, we as Christians can sit here and, and, and try to push the actual, you know, scripture and everything on um, people and not push. I didn't mean to say it like that, but we can sit here and talk to people, about, talk to people about it. But if we don't try to see if they're rejecting it, if we don't try to see why they're rejecting it, you know, um, that maybe could unlock a key for them to help them understand the Bible. Because if you're talking to someone that has been rejected their whole life and really not ever loved, and you're telling them that, oh, Jesus died for you, they're going to be like, bro, you are literally kidding right now. You know, if you come at it <coughs> a completely different angle and tell them maybe all the stories about how, you know, 
God performed miracles or he saved, you know, the Egyptian, you know, he, he did with Moses, like all these stories of how he saved people by, you know, showing them his love, they'll understand it a lot better than you just saying, no, he loves you. Like he died for you, you know? Okay. But what if you show them all these stories and if you understand where people's rejection and the base and the root of their fear of rejection is coming from, you can actually minister to, minister to them a lot better than just telling them black and white, you know, God is real and all this type of stuff. It's like, okay, what if they are scared if they stop rejecting it that, you know, I've made some really bad decisions and this is truly real and I'm going to stop rejecting it I, and I drive home after talking to you, I'm going to die, you know, but if you break it down to them a different way and see where their base of rejection is coming from, I think you could get to a lot more people. You know, mm-hmm. see how rejection manifests in different people. Rejection can manifest and anger. So if someone is super angry when you're trying to talk to them about God, you know, that's the root of that rejection of someone's really scared, you know, or just what is their, what is their, how is it manifesting in them? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and can we recognize that in ourselves? You know, how is our rejection manifesting? Or do we get mad when someone steps up at church and we're not stepping up. What is our root of that rejection? You know, are we getting upset? How do we recognize that in ourselves so that we become better Christians? And um, are we forgiving on ourselves when we recognize that we're doing that? You know? That's what I've I've said. um, That's similar to what I've said before with just how some people's view of God is based off of their earthly father. So if you had a father that Mm -hmm. rejected you, rejected loving you, didn't show you love, maybe he just rejected your family and abandoned the family, maybe it was an abusive father and an angry father that already warps and twists your mind to how you view God is. And that's what I think leads a lot of people to... um, thing that God's this angry, judgmental God, Mm -hmm. that he's not loving, you know, and it's just, I mean, the Bible says that, you know, no one is without sin. We've all fallen short and it's all, it's all a, it's all an even playing field. I know that a lot of Christians love to, uh, you know, think that there's different levels and, uh, there's different levels and they think that, um, where was I going? That that one sin is greater than a different sin type of thing. And it's like, man, sin, sin is sin. And that's what a lot of people, in a, in a problem with um, the the thing now with where there's there's people thinking that like, oh, if I, you know, I'm essentially a good person. You know, they try to justify themselves like, oh, well, it, God, you know, he just thinks like, if I live a certain way, as long as I try to do good and try to do this, and it's like, man, that's, that's not what it is. And I think, I think for a lot of people, Christianity is not easy, but coming to Jesus is, mm-hmm. in a sense. When you think like, no matter what you've done, his blood is stronger than that. And that's just, I think for a lot of people, depending on, you know, how raw and real their testimony is, that probably makes it harder for them to accept, like, I've, I've done this, I've done that, and I've done that, and God's like, I don't care, I've already, wa- I've already washed that clean, and they're like, well, what about this, what about that, and they're like, I, he's like, I, I, I don't care, Gee, my it son has along. already died for you. Yeah, it goes along with this, that little 30-day book I just got, that I yeah. showed you, a little brown book, I forgot the name of it. I don't remember. It's like Grace or something. Um, It's a really cool book. I can share the link later, but it's it's 30 Days, and it's written by um, a pastor's wife, and she has little stories of... uh, it's really hard to explain, and I obviously I'm, I'm only like two weeks in. So, but it's it's a it's such a cool book, and and today she was talking about how she went to go get her hair cut, and the hair st- her hairstylist is um, is a Christian, and she was getting her hair cut, and her hairstylist goes, "Well, how's your quiet time?" And she said, "I was completely." Um, and I have, I have been having this issue, so it was really cool to read today. And she said, you know, how's your quiet time? 
And she said, I was completely embarrassed and I didn't know what to say. She goes, because I had just had a baby a couple months ago and I really wasn't having quiet time. I was praying because I was really scared all the time because I just had a baby and I didn't know what I was doing, but I hadn't had a quiet time. And <coughs> she goes, I immediately felt very guilty, very upset, you know, God's mad at me type of thing because I haven't spent any quiet time. And she kind of broke it down and, you know, just said quiet time is, you know, just go back. Once you realize, oh man, you know, I, I, I've dropped the ball. You know, he's waiting right there for you no matter mm -hmm. what. Um, and you just, you know, say, I'm sorry. And, and you don't have to sit here. And, and she said it She said it awesome, too. And I, I think I've said this before, too. She goes, you know, your, your quiet time can be seven minutes. It doesn't have to be 45 minutes in a dark room. You know, it just needs to be a moment of just peace and you know, it could be in your it can be in your car by yourself. You know, turn off the radio. It doesn't have to be this big deal. Um, and it was just it was a really really cool. I can share that book. The book, I mean, it was eight bucks, and I really wasn't expecting a lot out of it. But it it's I bought another one that was from Joyce Meyer, and I was like, I'm like, oh, and yeah. this one is really good. So like you were saying, it's it, 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 people get caught up and you know, well, I've done this, and it starts to snowball, and there's no way it can go back. But you have two choices. You either go you either go more into the sin or you stop what you're doing. You know, if there's, there's two choices. So it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you've already done it. We can't go back. So you can either stop right there and don't make the snowball any bigger <laughs> once you realize it, or you can sit there and make the snowball bigger and, you know... Uh, he still yeah. don't feel the same way whatever size your snowball is, but yeah. <laughs> it's you might as well just stop. And that's the thing is you've got, the Holy Spirit will convict you. Yeah. And the devil will condemn you. Mm. You can get to that point where you're like, man, I, I haven't read my Bible in, you know, four or five days. Mm -hmm. And then that's conviction. Like, oh, I need, I need to do this. Yeah. Con condemnation, what the enemy starts to do is like, oh, like that. God's angry at you because you haven't read it. God's disappointed in you because you haven't read it. God's mad at you because you that's haven't read it. Right and that's just not that how that works. Of where you're, yeah. Yeah, that's it's just, that's right not how that works. That. That's how the enemy gets in your head. God, God's not angry at you because you, I mean, he's a loving father. Does he desire to spend time with you? Yeah. Yeah. We're all, we're all human. We're not perfect. Some, you know, some days I miss and then I spend the next day trying to, like, usually trying to to double up because do I don't want to. <laughs> well, I don't some days, ever see like, because I'm doing, I'm going back through the Bible uh, with the year plan, and some days, because I'm studying for the sermon, some days I won't read, you know, the the full three or four chapters of, of this day. I'll read one or two, and so the next day I'll I'll catch up and mm -hmm. do like that. Or like, usually what happens on the weekend is, I'm not reading those chapters, I'm soaking in the text for Sunday and then come like, you know, Sunday afternoon or Monday morning, I'm reading like eight chapters just to catch back up. And that's not what you have to do. I just, that's my like kind of OCD, like keeping on the track so I can finish it in the year. That's not saying that's what someone else has to do by any means. But that's just, you know, that's not how God, that's not how God operates. He's not mad at you for, think of it like... Like, uh, you get busy, and maybe you're not, or your kids, you know, they're not spending as much time with you, and they're running off, and they're playing, and you're like, man, I really want to hang out with the kids, you know, but they're over having their own little game or whatever, and you're like, oh, I would love to play with them, but I also don't really want to interrupt them, because they're having a lot of fun with that right now. And then as soon as they come back and realize you, it just warms your heart, and it's like, that's how God looks at it. He's yeah. like, hey, you know, I'm poking you, like, hey, don't forget about me. And then you'll read your Bible, but the enemy is like, oh, you forgot about God. He's going to forget about you now, and he's going to tear you down. And he's going to break up with you, and he's going to, you know, burn your house down and wreck your oh car. And it's like, this is, that's just not, but you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that snowball effect where it's like, oh, man, God's going to, like, shoot me down with and lightning. I, and I also was, this Sunday, was thinking, too, and this isn't exactly rejection, but I also was thinking, you know, um, it, you said before, you know, being a Christian is is hard. Being a Christian is hard. And I know that that's not something a lot of people want to say, but 
being a Christian is, is hard, you know? Fellow Christians shouldn't make it even harder. No, it shouldn't. And I just, Sunday was a rough morning. Um, I can't stress enough that we as Christians, no matter what walk you're in, what stage, because, and some people say baby Christian. I don't like to say baby Christian because who is to say another human is at some other spiritual level or spiritual like relationship with God than you are, or you are a higher level of a relationship with you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like to just say, you know, if you've accepted Jesus and you're a Christian, the worst thing that you could do, in in my opinion, maybe not the worst, but a big thing you can do is um, that can cause so much discouragement and even cause a Christian to reject. Mm-hmm. Um, Continuing to be a Christian is is not is criticism, just criticism. You know, it, it is hard enough. We don't need to make it any hard on each other. We do, we don't. I cannot picture Jesus being on this earth and meeting someone that is just trying their best. And doing everything that they know in their stage of their life to follow his word. And I can't picture him looking at them and say, well, you're, you should be doing a little bit more like this. Or you should, he would just be so happy that they're trying everything they can. And I'm not saying you're going out drinking Friday night. And then Saturday morning, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not condoning that. I'm not saying that. But if, a, if, you, if you know a Christian that's doing everything in their power to follow, and especially a young one, you know, um, shut up. <laughs> like, <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but stop. No, don't be. It, it, it's it's you're not doing anything to further the kingdom. No, and that's actually I, that's un, completely unbiblical. What I you're describing. literally stopped going to church and ruined so many things for ten years because of religious persecution people in my church when I was sixteen because I I I I didn't fit in with the clique that was at that church. I I didn't you know I I was too outspoken and I did this or do that. And I'm not saying that's not true. Like that's not what actually happened. I and mean, I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to say anything about anybody, but I stopped and I completely was like, I'm out. And I mean, like, I'm not saying like, I, I kind of stepped out. I was out. Like I was gone. Like you, I'm talking like flicking churches off as I'm driving by because I didn't want anything to do with any of it. I mean, I was PO'd, okay? <laughs> like, I was done, and I did so many things that just, um, I have, I regret, because I, you know, I, I just, I was so mad, because this is Christians, this is what they do. You so don't know who's listening to church. you. You know, you don't know who's listening to you, and you know how bad words hurt? Someone that is trying so hard, and you just think that, I mean, I'm not going to get started. Well, but, the, I mean, it's uh, just, it, it is hard. It is hard to sit here and, 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 and try to follow Jesus. Why are other Christians making it even harder? Well... <clears throat> That's getting really deep. Uh, I'm just, I'm well, just no. saying. If so the you Bible says, to... the Bible says that God hates those that sow discord among the brethren. So if your whole goal is coming in and sowing seeds of discord among people and talking down about people, especially talking down about your leadership or another or another Christian. That's not Christianity. That's not Jesus within you. If you're wanting to control someone else 
uh, and you're trying to use it under the guise of mentoring them, but you're wanting them to act how you want them to act, and you're wanting them to talk how you want them to talk, and you're wanting them to preach how you want them to preach. And you Because I'm getting <laughs> fired up. Because you're wanting them to do the things that you want to do. That's a controlling spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit within you. That's a demonic spirit using you to sow discord among the brethren. God hates that. And apart from that is the Bible also tells us that we're not supposed to be a a stumbling block for our brethren. So when you come to church and then you get completely judged in the wrong way by someone else that's a Christian and it causes you to stumble and then reject your faith... That's evil, and that's ev- they they were used by evil to cause you to slip into evil. And I, you know, I'm glad, obviously, you're back and everything's fine. But that's the problem. So much now just, in society it, is we keep talking about church hurt, church hurt, church hurt. Julie thing. just said it, and it's, it's not church thing. hurt; it's people. Well, yeah, people I'm just are saying, the, like, I know, is, but we it call it thing. church, and, and it makes people reject God because. We've gotten up on our high horse thinking that somehow since we've been following Jesus for 15 years, we're better than the guy that's followed him for 15 minutes. And that's just not the case. Yeah, you might have more knowledge, but when you're not showing any fruits of the Spirit by loving those people, how is that God? And just like that, like sowing discord and and then judging you and telling you you're doing this wrong and you're doing that wrong and you're doing that wrong. No, that's not, that's not Jesus at all. I mean, yeah, Jesus, he met with the sinners and he said, go and sin no more. And I know I wasn't, I mean, I know I wasn't the only one because it, it affected my parents too. I mean, they, they didn't take the route I did. My parents have always been (laughs) saints and, and they just did their Bible study at home and they watched church online, but they stopped too. Um, you know, they, it it affected them as well. So it wasn't just, it wasn't my imagination. It was just this, we didn't fit in the inner circle and I can tell you right now, I will, I will fight tooth and nail to make sure that that doesn't ever happen here again. It absolutely because will not. I, I cannot, you, no other human can tell the status of another human's heart. No. Never. That's God's job. I don't, I don't care. I don't care what the outer appearance looks like. I don't care. You know, if you're going to judge me, I look like a train wreck 24 seven. So you can't <laughs> like... Um, but I, I can dress up. I can dress up. Um, but it, it, we just have to understand as we interact with people and they come in the building and we meet them outside the building and, you know, you have to realize these people are dealing with their own root of rejection just like you are. And maybe you healed, but that doesn't mean they did. So every time that, you know, someone comes in the building and we're giving them judgmental looks or we're talking to them judgmentally or they hear that you're talking about them judgmentally and they don't even, you know, it hurts. You know, you, you're you hurting people. Yep. And that's the exact opposite of what yep. we're trying to do here. That's and, the exact opposite of Jesus. And it's and it's just so, it's it, it takes it a, such a level beyond rejection. You know, this... I never want this building to be a reason why someone never literally walks into a church again because they were so judged and they were so, and I know it's, it's not supposed to be about the people here, but we have to face it. It's about the people here. No, it is. We're trying to make sure people aren't dying and going to hell. We're trying to reach people where they're, they are at, love them like Jesus did and let Jesus sanctify them and make them whole. That's a lifelong process. If someone comes in the door, I'll just be honest. If, if I hear that someone's talking about someone else and doing that stuff, I'll kick you out myself. I, that is not gonna. No, I don't care. I don't care. How I'm not cool having that family church. Fan, that's not. That's not family church. I don't. That's why I say it all the time. Yeah. Now I got it from 28, 2819, Pastor Philip Mitchell. You belong before you believe. If there's an atheist coming in here, I don't care. Don't judge them. They're in the right place. They're getting seeds, and it, whether they find their faith or not, they still belong. 
They still belong. God still loves them. And if your your whole your whole identity is wrapped up in wanting to judge them and make them feel terrible about themselves, dude, you need to seriously come up and pray and repent of that because that is not God in you at all. That is not Jesus in you. And I, I refuse. I absolutely refuse. I know I'm not the lead pastor yet, but as long as I'm here in some type of leadership role... That's not happening in this building. That's not happening ever in this church. And I will put my foot down and die on that hill. I am not going to be a place of judgment. I, this is not going to be a place of, of hypocritical attitudes. This is not going to be a place of people thinking they can just run along and spread little rumors about someone Sorry, else. This is not going to be a place <laughs> of <dad>. sowing discord. <laughs> this is not going to be a place of judging people out of the building. This is not going to be a place. Now, I'm serious. I can't stand it. I absolutely 100% thousand percent absolutely hate that crap i don't care i do not care i hate it and with that we hope you have a great night (laughs) no you you, no you want transparency or whatever that's my heart jesus came for the broken he came the mitch just said it a minute ago uh, an amazing thing we need to stop shooting our wounded and and hoping they'll heal because i think the church is for the broken i lot and and being fully transparent like i'm so broken we I'm, all are, I'm so, until no, no, we no. get in glory I'm, That's in not what I mean. I'm saying, like, I, <coughs> I'm still broken. I still have a really hard time trusting anyone in this building. And I'm really, I'm just, even you, especially your dad. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, I, <coughs> I am still very wary uh, of everyone. And I... Um, the very close people that I have connected with here, um, uh, I, I, I do trust them. But it took a really long time for me to get close. That's why I have a really hard time coming to small groups. Um, I know people are probably, oh, she didn't come. But it's like, I'm sorry. Also I, busy and have kids I'm, and uh, no, are I could, here I every other day of the week. <laughs> no, I, I, I could have made time. I wasn't doing anything. I'll be honest. But I really still have, I'm still very broken. So, and I'm not saying this as a pity party, but, you know, I, it, I don't come off as like that, I don't think. I'm, I, I don't really don't think I do. But, like, deep down, I'm still very church hurt. I'm still very broken. And, and do you see, uh, not to stop you, but do you guys see what that causes? That was 20 years ago or more now that this happened? Not quite 20, dang. Like, I'm not I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, that, it's been a long time, and you're, it's, it still hurts you. That's why it's important to not be that judgmental, hypocritical Christian that is the stereotypical reason that people leave the church. Go ahead. But my point was be gentle, not a gentle to where they get away with everything. Um, no. Because I know someone's going to twist that. But be gentle with people that you think are just fine, with people that are, that are um, I'm not leading anything, but, you know, I am the daughter-in-law of your parents and I'm your wife and you're doing the, and it's, you got it. Like, like just we're, I'm, we're, people are still broken and they're still trying to trust other people, other Christians. And we're still every day getting up and choosing this life. I am still choosing this life. So like, be gentle. You don't, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're doing the best we can. We literally right now could be making triple the amount of money as a nurse and alignment, and you and I could stop this tomorrow and go find those jobs again and get a new camper and get a new house and get all these things. We don't have to, you know, sit here and coupon and do all this stuff. We don't have to make these choices. So it's like... We're still getting up every day and choosing this life because we both very firmly believe this is what we're supposed to be doing. And I just really want people to realize they've really got to watch what they say. And they really have to be gentle. If you're a Christian and you believe in Jesus, you know, you don't have to fully believe in that person, but you don't have to bring him down to the floor either. 
You don't have to tear them down. That's a choice that you make. Just like you choose to believe in somebody, you can choose not to tear them down. You can choose just not to do anything at all. You can just... <laughs> Anyways. I posted, but... I posted on my Facebook, for those of you, and it's, I made it public, so if you can find it on my Facebook, I posted uh, three sermons from this weekend. I reposted mine. I posted uh, Stephen Furtick's message, which was really good. Tony uh, had and it was it. on it was on <laughs> healing from kidding, like <laughs> anxiety and all the hypothetical mm-hmm. things. It was a really great word. I've watched it twice now. Um, and I posted Philip Anthony Mitchell's from 2819, his message, which was no need for offense. And everything you just described was pretty much what his sermon was on, was about needlessly and pointlessly offending people, causing people to stumble just because you're doing something that your you don't need to be doing. Because exactly. your fear of because rejection. Because your like that, fear like, of literally losing control, your fear of rejection. And maybe that's not it every single time, but literally... There's there's like just a handful of things that boil that it boils down to when people react the way they do. Mm-hmm. You know. That's why I made the point like that I that I think and I it was it I went through I can't remember how it came to me. I was thinking about something and it was just like I went through this whole scenario just like breaking down layer and layer and layer and then at the bottom of it, it was just the Holy Spirit spoke into me that rejection is born out of self-resentment. You resent something within yourself and that's what I was talking about Sunday. You resent something within yourself, whether it's your physical appearance, something wrong with how you how you look, or that was not something wrong with how you look, but you think something is wrong with how you look, how you speak, how you act, how you sound. Something is within you that you resent, and it makes you get just such like a self hatred in some type of area that you begin to reject other people. So it's like if I was really short. And I'm around all these people that are a foot taller than me and I'm insecure about my height. I'm going to start rejecting everything that those people say because I'm insecure about my height and I'm mad that they're taller than me. So it makes me take it out on them and hate them and spread rumors about them and talk bad about them and and, and all this kind of stuff all because I hate how short I am. Does that make sense? It's like that kind of thing. So it's just we reject people because we we resent something within ourselves. But that was that whole message was just like... There's no sense, uh, you know, and I said, yeah, the, the Bible is offensive, but I, I didn't mean it like how that is, but it's like... Offensive. Like offensive, yeah. yeah. And he was talking about, so the, the one of the illustrations he gave was that he went uh, somewhere overseas in Israel or somewhere, and wherever they were going, they didn't want him to walk in their church they didn't want people wearing their shoes or something like that. I don't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, he's like, well, I'm a Christian. You know, I've got this freedom. I don't, there, who, who is a man to tell me, you know, what to do type of thing? Like, I, I'm, I've got this freedom. Mm-hmm. But he said, I put it, I put a, uh, I can't remember the word that he said, but he's like, I could, I, I just kind of put a temporary block on my freedom so that I don't offend someone else. Mm-hmm. And Jesus did the same thing. He brought up the thing about taxes and, and the story, he broke it down and Jesus hadn't paid the tax. But since Peter had already said that he paid the tax, he told Peter, go and get the money and go pay my tax, go pay your tax. That way we don't offend them. And it's just like that. Like church is a hospital for the broken Mitch. My baseball team is perfectly fine. Um, have you seen? Uh, Didn't yours just win? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. It, it did. Yeah. His didn't. His didn't. How's Acuna doing? I have no idea. I'm just saying this. <laughs> but no, <laughs> Actually, that's no, just Philly's the thing win. is church well, okay, is for so the broken of, and we're all it. broken in some way. And it's just, who are you to what come was that in thing that and I read? think you're the doctor? That... Jesus is the doctor. <laughs> that's the way you said that. <laughs> I'm so tired. Um... <laughs> You know, and another thing, too, is we got to think about, like, the rejection with, and you just said it a couple minutes ago, but I didn't want to interrupt because I'm not as mean as you are. Um, but, But 
how the thing that I read the other day, bro, the thing that I read the other day that you started busting out laughing was the, the rejection where, like, you know, if we are in an argument, I get really mean really fast, <laughs> you know, and... I, I, and it's it was the thing, but remember, like I I got really mean. It's because I try to push you away first because of how bad I don't want you to leave. Remember that mm-hmm. little thing. So it, it's kind of the same thing, you know. You know what I'm trying to mm-hmm. get at. And it's you just know, it's so, like self destructing. Yeah, yeah. It's self destructing. <laughs> it's it's just. <laughs> There's so many things. If uh, we, we would literally we just argue. read the Bible we don't argue and at all. do what the I'm Bible saying, says, we could avoid so many pointless confrontations and I'm, conflicts I'm saying and like, issues, but nah. We don't argue. I'm just saying like hypothetically, we have, if we, we have did, un, what I call if it, we un- ever un- argued, uncomfortable disagreements. Which we don't. Sorry, we're not you, Philip and Kathy, and never fight. It, it, no, if anybody <laughs> says they don't argue, they are a bold-faced Your liar. parents literally don't argue. No, they just don't do it in public. Do nobody doesn't argue. I mean, that's I really just don't the think dumbest lie. I love them. We don't, we don't ever fight. Oh, you probably have the worst fights out of anyone <laughs> because you're trying to say you don't. Um, Anyways. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so yeah, just, just the rejection thing, you know, just... That's, we, we've got to get back to this emulating. Weekend? This weekend? Yeah, because it's seven. You said that we were going to be done in 45 minutes. <laughs> oh, wait, I got to point at the timer. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. It's fine. You're like, no, I, I did, I, you said good. you're actively working on making it, it shorter. Good. I am. So I'm actively trying to help you. We're there. Down. Listen. Uh, yeah. I'm. Then you yell at working me every on single time. That I, I do, do not it. yell at you. No, so that is, uh, that is, we'll just wrap it up real quick. That is this weekend. I don't know why I'm holding up my folder. <laughs> Here's my notes. Um, that is... This week, this weekend, last weekend was uh, rejection. Uh, this weekend will be, what am I on, four? This Rebuttal. weekend was going to be... Refuting. This is chapter 19. Um, I, I would say the subtitle is Rebuke and Revival because that's what the chapter is. Uh-huh. I'm going to call it Return. I don't like it. <laughs> so kidding, this like Sunday... <laughs> Uh, come early, come early, invite people, share this, don't share the live one, wait until we post it, and then share that. Oh, Leave because likes, the, li- comments, the live and stream, stuff. if you share, I mean, you can do both if you want, but if you share the live stream, um, the video, once the live stream's over, like say the it service is an hour and a half, you know, after an hour and a half passes, it shows video not available. Mm-hmm. So nobody, if they're late on your Facebook yep. or they didn't immediately, like were scrolling when you posted it, um, they won't get it. So the best thing to do would be either, uh, and we can also type up something that shows our replay times too, where you could post like, hey, live stream is getting replayed. Are you good? Mm-hmm. Um, and, but the best thing to do would be to share the sermon once yes. it gets posted on the once it gets posted on the Facebook page and it has like the YouTube clip. Yeah, so if that makes sense. Yeah, the um, that's the thing, and I know it sounds weird, and I'm not trying to like beg for this kind of stuff, but we are trying to get the gospel out there, and it's by no means is it just us trying to blow up and get famous. I don't I don't care about that, but people need Jesus. I'm trying to reach the lost. I want this to go as far and as wide as possible. Um, and the best way to do that, like like she was just saying, so the live videos, when you share them, they do end up getting archived. So what you need to do is, if you have TikTok, when the reels go on there, repost it, drop a like, drop a comment, because just watching watching things doesn't do anything. You have to you have to give engagement. Engagement kicks the algorithm in, and then that's what makes and other do it, people do it watch with it. All the stuff, all, well, all the pastors that everything. really like oh, yeah, make you yeah. feel something because not just ours. You never know if you really feel a certain way about something you watch from any of the pastors. Um, I can <coughs> guarantee you that there's probably someone on your friends list that feels the exact same way. Go ahead and share it because it's. Uh, you know, it's good. Um, I did but want definitely to... the the YouTube our YouTube is getting uh, crushed right now with it'll come back stuff. Up. Oh, I'm, it's fine. I know it's all going to happen in time. But just also, as an encouragement to you guys, 
with YouTube, sharing it, liking it, commenting on it. It's it's the engagement is what furthers See, the See, I told algorithm. you your mom doesn't argue. They don't argue. I'm telling you, they right. don't argue. They don't argue. They argue. They Everybody don't argue. argues. They don't Every, argue. Look, we're fighting right now on live yeah, television. Yeah, but we're not them. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and really wanted to give, I'm not trying to downplay any other volunteers at all, but I'm really proud of um, the three people that have really stepped up. We have someone possibly that's going to be a guy, possibly mm-hmm. singing on... Um, it's coming tomorrow. Coming tomorrow. We've got the, the new Tyler. The new Tyler. That's playing electric. Oh, oh and, and shout out... Go ahead. Go ahead. Ladies no. first. Okay. Uh, definitely everybody be praying for Little Tyler, well, Big Tyler, but, you know, young Tyler. Tyler Pearson, he was on the um, acoustic guitar. He left today. Was it today? He left today because yeah. he messaged us. He left today for... Um, basic training. Basic training in California. And, Did yeah. you go to Paris Island? Is that in California? South Carolina. He said he was going to California. Well, then he's going to... What is Fort that? Fort Ir- Irwin. Oh, I think I don't know. Anyway, weird. whatever. No, I'm um, they didn't do whatever. so. He left for basic uh, today, so he'll be gone. He'll be back after AIT and everything. He'll be back in November. Um, so keep him in your prayers. I think he's going to do just fine. So he won't be up on. I told him to call the drill instructors by first name. <laughs> don't don't do that. Um, and then we have. Uh, other Tyler. I was going to say Big other Tyler, guy. but that's so mean. I didn't mean it like that. We have other, He's very talented. He's an electric guitar player. Um, they, he stepped up recently, and his wife has now brought the She's been making breakfast team. for the worship team on Sundays. Every Sunday Hallelujah. with her young kids. And I know that is a feat because I tried to do that a couple Sundays, and it is difficult. Um, I spilled coffee all in my truck that one day. Just try- <laughs> I don't care about that. Um, and then we also have uh, Jason Derulo. <laughs> Jason, who has joined us on the production team, and I'm training him with sound. Um, very intelligent guy. Yes. He works at Cadillac? I think it was Cadillac, yeah. Yeah. So he's great, and he's bringing his 13-year-old son. Adam, do not bring meatloaf. Adam, don't bring meatloaf. Don't bring meatloaf. Don't nobody, bring meatloaf. nobody actually Oh, it's his like- nannies, though. Let I him bring care. nannies meatloaf. Meatloaf is disgusting. Okay, some people like I've it. Never, well, and it's nannies. They can repent. And it's nannies. Don't I be don't, hating on Adam's nanny now. She I'm not. I'm hating on Adam's nanny's meatloaf because I don't like meatloaf. <laughs> His nanny is probably a very nice lady. I'll shake her hand and say hi if she ever comes. I don't like meatloaf. See, somebody put a mad face on the comment right there. That's how nasty meatloaf is. <sighs> Oh, and um, softball, you guys are being really patient, really awesome. Not really. Oh, stop. Um, <laughs> we... They can't read. So, like, Carolyn's, my daughter's softball team, like, we're literally having to go to someone's neighborhood uh, grassy field to practice softball because every field is shut down right now. Um, Even the Not every field, I'm sorry. I mean, like, the Little League fields. Uh Treaty's already like permanent. It's been crazy. So we're really trying to. Uh, we talked. You talked to Adam already, right? Did you talk to Adam already? About what? The field? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Surprise, Adam. <laughs> um, you know, Adam gracious, like he offered to help us and level out and make our own field on the property, which is closing on September 23rd. Everyone yes, keep praying, be praying about for that. that. Um, I think it'd be awesome. Really, the goal is I wasn't trying to make this a crazy uh, competitive, let's kill each other uh, over softball. I really was just trying to get a couple people that really enjoy playing. What? Nothing. Amen, no meat. <laughs> Mitch, ain't nobody want to hear you sing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, Moose. To zoom <laughs> Brooke, the camera way Brooke out. He's so tall. Brooke couldn't remember his nickname the other day. She's like, what about, you know, Knuckles, whatever his name is. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, bro. Holy cow. I thought we were talking about a Sonic character. Knuckles. <laughs> you can be Sonic. He'll be Knuckles. I don't know. Um, anyway, so my goal was really to make a, a really extended, because it would just be for the fall softball and spring, so it wouldn't be year long. Um, right now it's going to be winter softball by the time I get all this together, but whatever. I really wanted it to be a extended fellowship time for those that, uh, you know, after service, if you get us out by 12, 
you know, after service, we can go to our own softball field. Uh, Poppy can bring the grill. We can do hot dogs and hamburgers. Everyone can have their little camping chair. And the people that are on the little softball, play softball, kids can run around. And it's just an extended lunchtime fellowship with people that want to. And that was kind of my goal. That was what I envisioned with some, you know, organized softball playing. We'll get there. And I wanted to see you in softball pants. Well, with that, (laughs) this is the end of the family room. Um, No, it's all exciting things. Um, If you don't have our app, make sure you get our app. Get on the groups. Um, Gabby's going to play softball, too. Random. (laughs) but yeah, so we're we're working on the softball stuff, um, and plus it's soaking wet right now with all the rain. Um, but yeah, just uh, we're, we're trucking along. We got a lot of stuff coming up. Potluck is this Sunday. Absolutely no meatloaf. I will cast the demons out of this building in Jesus' name. Um, Tina said, "I'm not bringing meatloaf, but mine is." Good. <coughs> no. She said she's not bringing it. Calm That's, down. I just I hate. I, it's disgusting. <laughs> I don't like meatloaf. My dad used to make meatloaf, and it was my least favorite oh, night of the week. I hope Sorry, watching. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out when we get He's home. a very talented cook, right? But you've made some. I've never made meatloaf. No, not meatloaf. You've made some very interesting things over the years. We've been very interestingly poor. So <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, now that we're completely gone off track, um, yeah, so the softballs... And desserts included. Is it? So, like, potluck just means, like, anything that oh, makes you happy. I thought happy. you meant included, like, we already have dessert, so that was a weird way to... No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can bring, you know, your favorite dessert, you know, whatever it is, I mean... Dirt cake. Mom, make the brownies. I say, Mom, make the brownies. Yes. I just thought of that. Dad, tell Mom to make brownies. My mom, please don't make carrot cake. She made, she's going to literally kill me. I told her not to watch live because she has like the girls right now. So she won't kill me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> she made, um, she made homemade carrot cake for my birthday one year. I mean like homemade, like there were pieces of shredded carrot. Is that actually in carrot cake? I'm s- I don't know. I tried carrot cake once. It was I don't disgusting. know, but it was I like didn't remember homemade, there being and she pieces felt of carrot so in it. So bad. It's like cake with pulp. That's terrible. <laughs> Who put? Oh. Okay, you don't but, need to dog her that bad. I'm not, but that's. I mean, she was. She. <laughs> I don't like pulp. Well, you remember the one year I made Carolyn's cake and I tried to make fondant and it. The donut like, thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not a baker. That was <laughs> I can cook now, but I cannot bake. I mean, like I you will can bake. ruin. No, I cannot. I will ruin. You get those little pre-made cookies, you know what I'm saying? And you just literally take them Because you go out. by the time. Well, when they're dripping no, wet, I don't dude. think they're oh done. Gosh. The sugar cookies yes. and the, the best ones. Yeah, and it yeah. says 13 to 15 minutes or something. And yeah. every time I'm like, no, when go I open 10 it and to 12 it's and minutes, check it. It's got to come out it soft. It literally and is like, like, like oh, and it's like, it's like dad cooking a steak 47 minutes on each side and it comes out brown. I'm just a, saying. Eating a But I made a football. horrible cake, and it was like the worst tasting cake, and it was the... Brownies. Mom said, okay, brownies. Good. Those are so good. Um, I'm stealing the whole pain. Hey, Landon. Oh. Look at that. Meatloaf. He said, See? Look. Um, we got to go. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, Soft I made track. a really bad cake. Well, I'm just trying to make... You know, my mom's going to be really upset that I brought the carrot cake now. So I made a really bad cake, too. It was horrible. Carolyn would not eat... Nobody would eat it. It was really bad. Fondant's really hard, by the way. It's I don't like fondant. It's just well, I made it especially disgusting. It was not good. <laughs> it was a, it was a job well terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we rejected all of my notes. We rejected the time limit. We rejected um, staying on topic and on task, and that's all because we were talking about rejection tonight. I'm just making a joke oh. about the word rejection. Hello, this is the only one we've actually stayed on. Point until the Somewhat. end. Uh, yeah, so this Sunday, chapter 19, Second Chronicles, return, rebuke and revival. I feel like we're watching return. like we're watching Star Wars movies. What? Like, Dude, like, and then. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna make. It's like building up to where I wanted to go, and like it's just gotten better and better, I think. And 
I'm so ready for chapter 20. It's going to be... Are you going to be funny this Sunday? Because you weren't really funny this last Sunday. Ah, thanks. I missed what you know, you're funny. causing me to stumble. Okay. Can you be funny you're this hurting Sunday? you're my feelings. I don't Do come you, up and here. I'm sorry. I don't want to be like... I just have a quick question. I'm sorry. And I want... I want them to witness this so that I'm safe so you don't kill me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do you, <coughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but do you purposely talk about like the homosexuality and all that stuff every single Sunday on purpose or does that just come to you? It comes up. Okay. I'm just wondering. No. Uh, so you can see my notes. Uh, I don't know if you can read this. There's not a lot there. Nobody can read that, Jared. Great. Don't read it. Uh, and all that is is kind I'm of. I'm just curious. Like I don't always. No, all I come like, up here oh now gosh, is like, because <laughs> I was writing it out, and now I just do it how God gives me like the little snippets and little things like that, and I uh, I write that out, and that's my launch point, <laughs> and I go, we're in Bro, my truck, Mitch. Don't knuckles. worry. <laughs> knuckles. That's so wrong. No, um, I it's hate just you. <laughs> no. The problem is, it's such a. Atlanta sucks. It's such a prevailing thing, and it's infiltrated the church, and that really yeah. drives me insane. It's completely infiltrated the church. We see it now all the time on the Facebook, that one uh, post. the St. Augustine news page. Mm -hmm. Where can I find an affirming church? Where can, Where can I find, I find this? And it's just like, man, uh, we're, we're, the, there's such a drought of God's word in the church. It's like First Samuel all over again. The word of the Lord was rare. And we need it to be preached. And my thing is like, when I, when I bring it up, I'm not doing it out of hate because I don't hate these mm -hmm. people. We need to be praying for them <coughs> and God needs to reach them because if not, we, we know what will happen to their eternal soul if they don't repent. And it's just... Well, no one's going to respond to hate. No, no one responds to hate. But, and I'm not trying to bring it up every Sunday, but it's, I mean, the fact that that has infiltrated the church and we have church churches, we have churches mm -hmm. here in town that are affirming churches and putting rainbows on the building and wearing rainbows. And you watch these videos and there's ordained ministers sitting there saying that, that homosexuality is fine. Is and it's just like, dude, yeah, no. So it's like... The, I'm not trying to bring it up all the time, but somebody's got to speak out against it because it's, ah, I it's not I was just biblical. curious. I was no, just I'm curious. just saying. So I was I'm like... just telling you the answer. <laughs> it's uh, everything. Yeah, I, I, I come up here and like I say in my prayer, God, I'm your vessel. Just speak through me. Yeah. And I don't, I, don't try to, I don't try to have any of my flesh up here. I just try to literally we gotta go. just flow. We got to go. I got to get the kids a bit. But that's why, that's why the <laughs> prayer, so a perfect example of that is that's why the prayer Sunday took so long. I started, mm -hmm. and if actually if you go back and watch, I started and there's a spot where I kind of like open my eyes and look at the ground and all of a sudden just launched in because it was just, I, start, I started and I like paused and then it was just, I could feel the Holy Spirit and then I just literally opened my mouth and it was just like, it just dumped. All of that I out. I thought you were having a grandma seizure. So seizure. it was great. Um, hey, good night. <laughs> yeah, good night. We'll see you Sunday, 10 a.m. Come early. Invite people. You know what to do. We love you. We'll see you. Have a great rest of the week. Yes. Good night. <laughs> Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.